we were talking about uh, someone who we both dearly love, Bob Carver. Mm -hmm. And I, I got involved with Carver probably before you were born in the face <laughs> linear days. Oh, wow. Um, when he used to use a whole bunch of uh, high voltage television uh, transistors, they were made for TV. They were mm. these high voltage uh, output devices, it's little tiny things. They just lined them all up. That was the Phase 400. Yeah, know, famous yeah, amp. Yeah, yeah. you remember that. Yeah. And um, yeah, it had to be before you were born. It was before my kids were born. So, anyway. Um, so, Bob and I were talking, I, I had, had this crazy idea that in a sealed box you've got a lot of back pressure so when the woofer cone moves back there's a cushion of air back there and the pressure goes way high mm -hmm. and then when it moves the other direction there's less air pressure out of the room mm -hmm. so you have this asymmetric uh, mm -hmm. pressure thing mm -hmm. so I, I had come up with this silly Paul crazy idea why don't we put a vacuum inside mm -hmm. of the woofer box so that it, if you calculate it that under pressure it would wind up being more linear mm -hmm. and I and of course that would suck the woofer in when it was but when you turn it on if it was self amplified I could put a little bit of current through the amp and, mm -hmm. and center it back up so you have a little bit of easy bias on it mm -hmm. anyway just one of those Paul, you know wacky Paul ideas and I ran it past Bob and, and, and I never knew whether to trust Bob or not but he said oh I, I thought of that and I tried it and it and it, it, it turns out it doesn't matter. Uh, so, not that we're going to do anything like wacky of Paul's idea, but but I mean, help us understand, you know, why that would or wouldn't work, or why it is a good idea or isn't a good idea. Well, you know, one of the things I like to read, if, if you're a, a speaker hobbyist, uh, one of the guys that used to work for, for Bob Carver is a guy named Jim Croft. Oh, yeah. And Jim um, has a thing called Acoustic Patents. It's a, an article he writes monthly for uh, Voice Coil Magazine, which is part of the audio amateur group, used to be Speaker Builder Magazine. And they review, you know, patent claims and details of inventions of stuff like this. And I would say it's about 50-50. He chooses stuff that's either like a really cool patent or something that's just like totally flawed in its concept and it's sort of, tongue, you know, he's not making fun of it, but he'll just sort of poke holes in it. And, um, and he's a great guy for that sort of thing. He has all kinds of wacky, you know, patents on things, you know, kind of, um, you know, an inventor. And, um, you know, there are some technologies that can dramatically lower the box size requirements of a woofer, because that's always the challenge is this, um, you know, efficiency bandwidth trade-off in speakers. So in order to play deep bass, the, um, you know, every octave you want to go down for a given efficiency, the box size has to be multiplied by eight because it's the cube of the cutoff frequency is what uh, is, you know, um, what's dictating that. So you can imagine, yeah, if you want a given sensitivity, then suddenly you have a giant box if you want to play down to, to 20 hertz or the, the limits of audibility. And um, actually, Kef had an invention that was really promising for this which was using activated charcoal. It's called their ACE technology or ACE. And uh, you know, the I, I did a project with uh, Lori Fincham at THX one time and he was the head of engineering for CAF back when they were first researching this. And at one point, that's when they had hired Andrew Jones there and apparently Andrew was super interested in this. Uh, you know, this is sort of hearing the story third hand on my part, but had a lot of problems with stability in the system where it would it would function like that. You could well, reduce. Explain how it was supposed to work. Well, apparently the the active charcoal can um, with the change in air pressure. I, I'd have to actually. There, there's um, it's able to um, absorb and release um, in a very particular way that apparently reduces the box size by a factor of two and a half or something, two, two and a half. So that uh, Kef actually released a product with this that was like a satellite subwoofer system with, with big claims about the base exchanger for these little teeny slim satellites. But I guess it's, I don't know the exact physical nature of, of what's going on with it, but it... Um, so there's a lot of ideas. There's ideas around. like that, but 
Um, you know, and then back in the day when people were trying to put a woofer in a small box, they would do a controlled leak in the box, these uh, aperiodic enclosures and things, but it's not, it's not an active system where it's trying to boost and reduce it. But, you know, I don't see why that wouldn't work, but, you know, I'm not really a first principles engineer on some of this stuff where, um, you know, there are some brilliant guys that have these, you know, really fundamental understanding of the physics of some of these kinds of things and we'll come up with the inventions like a Bruce Thigpen kind of guy where it's yeah. like okay I'm gonna make fan blades that modulate like a helicopter and we'll make I base mean, with the, it it's the like, rotary sub yeah I mean, I mean I, you know that's I, I boy you yeah. know there was a guy named Rick I, Wiseman I, I worked with that was like that where he, he came up with a system of using voice call actuated pop valves for a car engine where it could turn it between a gas engine and an air com an air compressed air based engine what? So there's these people that have these crazy brains <laughs> that can do this stuff yeah. um, with inventions, but I'm I'm more, of, you know, a chef where where there's an existing recipe of understanding and sort of optimizing all of the ingredients <laughs> to make them as good as possible. But but I'll, I'll have to leave it to the real scientists about so I, some I, of the I, wacky I'm stuff. I'm probably in the first category. <laughs> where, where come up with these crazy wacky ideas and then have somebody like you figure out how to make it work. Yeah, there, there's. Uh, <laughs> And that's, you know, part of the fun and excitement is um, how many different approaches there are to, to getting to the same point, yep. you know, and, um, you know, I, I like that about audio. Yeah, me yeah. too. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm.